What's happening guys? It is Brian Alzer with NeverState.com and in this video we're going to talk about my favorite ab and oblique variations for strongman and powerlifting. Now if you are personally looking for a chiseled out six pack with hardly any body fat, I would recommend push aways. As in push away from the table my friend. If you are trying to look shredded, that has so much more to do with what you're putting in your mouth than what you're actually doing in the gym, so I would recommend getting your diet in check if you want a chiseled out six pack. If you're looking more towards a strong, powerful, dangerous type of core, I would recommend doing basic movements like your squat, your deadlift, your front squat. Good mornings, yoke walks, farmer's walks, waiter's walks, things like that. Nothing is going to put more stress on your abs than a thousand pound yoke walk. I can guarantee you that. No amount of sit-ups in the world is going to put as much stress on your core as those basic heavy movements. So don't neglect those. But if you have watched any of the program videos on either my channel or the one that I did on Alan Thrall's channel, you will know that I am a huge advocate of either doing ab or oblique variations, either between your sets or at the end of your giant sets for two reasons. Number one, it's going to regulate your rest. So it's going to build in that rest period and honestly doing a set of 10 sit-ups is not going to tire you out that much. And then number two, it is gonna drive up your base core strength, which is gonna help your squat numbers, your deadlift numbers, it's gonna help everything. Now I am not saying that doing a couple crunches is gonna make you deadlift 800 pounds, but it's not gonna hurt. In my personal opinion, the squat and the deadlift are more core exercises than they are leg or back exercises because your core is the weak point in that movement. And typically that's what fails when you miss a lift. Try to think your abs like triceps on the bench press. Is doing tricep extensions gonna make you bench 500 pounds? Nope, but it's not gonna hurt. Now while we're talking about abs today, I want you to think about bracing your core, not trying to collapse it like you're taking a selfie on Snapchat. Get your life together, man. So when you perform your ab exercise, I want you to remember that you're either ingraining good reps or bad reps, and if you're teaching your body to collapse down and your shoulders hunch forward, that's exactly what's gonna happen in a squat or a deadlift, and that's not gonna end well for you. So even if you don't want a six pack, think of these as ab exercises to help prime your muscles for the work that they're about to do, and you're training your body to perform exactly how you want it to in a heavy movement. Let's go get after it. All right, so the first one I want to talk about are these ab pushy outy things that I took from Ed Cohen. I don't know the actual name for them. Names are weird. Just like in Strongman, this thing's referred to as the Rolling Thunder. And I just call it the fat twisty handle thing. Anyway, I will use these ab pushy outy things as a warm up before my squat or deadlift day. Just start teaching my core exactly what I want it to do during those big movements. Now in this example, I'm using kettlebell, but you can use dumbbell, you can use weight plate, you can use whatever you want. But basically you just lay on the floor and you place the weight on top of your stomach. Then you get your big belly breath, brace your core outward the exact same way you would on a squat or a deadlift. You hold it for a couple seconds, then you let it sink back down. You do this for a bunch of reps. Like I said, I use this a lot of times in my warm up and is nothing more than a priming cue to teach my body exactly what I want it to do in the movements that I'm about to ask of it. Next up is the hang leg raise, which I like to do from a pull up bar or even from grenade pull ups so that it works my grip a little bit more. But a lot of people will do toes to bar, knees to elbows, pretty much anything where you're rolling up. But the thing that I want you to keep in mind is you don't want to be crunching and collapsing your core. You want to be keeping it pushed out. So for me personally, I like hanging leg raise better than the other two variations. But all you're basically doing is hanging and then getting as much air into your belly as possible, bracing down and raising your legs up for as many reps and sets as is needed. Next up is the ab wheel rollout. Now you can do these standing, you can do these kneeling. There are a lot of different variations, a lot of different things that you want to focus on on this, but I'm not going to cover that in this video because it would be too long. That's going to be a separate video all to itself. All that I'm interested in for this video is that you're bracing your core the exact same way that you would in a squat or a deadlift. You're going to roll out, keep your abs tight, suck them back in. Now if you don't have access to an ab wheel, you can use a barbell and plates and sometimes I actually like that more because it forces you to have to arrest that forward momentum of the weight and when you add a little bit of pounds to the bar, that actually gets pretty tough. In that same family of exercises, I also like the ring or blast strap layout. All you're gonna do is stand on a box, grab a hold of the rings, and lay your body out, then suck it back in. These are actually harder, for me personally at least, than the ab wheel rollout, but they are an awesome, awesome tool. You should definitely use them. And now I wanna give you guys a couple body weight exercises that you can do if your gym is too busy that you can't be walking around and leaving equipment, or if you don't have any of these tools that I'm talking about. So the first body weight one is planks. Do them on your hands, do them on your elbows, do them with a weight plate on your back. Do whatever you need to do. Just keep those abs tight and pushed out the exact same way that you would on a squat or a deadlift or any other heavy movement. Do a lot of planks and do them for long periods of time. And then we have hollow rocks, which look very, very simple until you do them. All that you're gonna do is lay flat on your back, stick your hands above your head and point out your toes. Curl your body just a little bit. That's gonna hollow it out, hence the name. And then you're gonna rock. 
If you want to try something hard, either at the end of your workout or as part of your warm up, go ahead and set a clock for the Tabata protocol, 20 seconds work, 10 seconds rest for eight rounds or four total minutes, and do hollow rocks for the work section. You're welcome. And then finally, we have Dragon Flags, which are made famous by Bruce Lee and Rocky IV. If you are a young man, you need a little bit more Bruce Lee and Rocky IV in your life. That is the only way you're gonna make good life choices. Get it together, man. That said, these are hard. But the basic idea is that you lay down flat on a bench and you hold onto it behind your head. At that point, you're gonna raise your legs all the way up and punch them towards the ceiling so that you can get a reverse kind of negative arch in your back. Then you lower your legs down so that your lower back, your butt, your legs, nothing touches, and then you reverse the motion. If you find this too advanced for you and you can't reverse the motion, just work on the lowering of your legs portion of the movement. Told you they were hard. So if you have watched those program videos, you will know that I like to throw ab variations at the end of my giant sets on my lower body days. On my upper body days, I like to do oblique variations because the side of your core is just as important as the front. In fact, if you're bracing and you're not pushing in a 360 degree awareness into your belt, you're leaving pounds on the table. So now we're gonna move on to oblique exercises. All right, so the very first oblique variation are overhead side bends, and they look super easy until you do it. Start light, my friend. So grab a barbell or an axle or something of weight, extend it above your head. Typically, I like to keep my hands a little bit wider than I would on an overhead press, and then you bend over to the side, like this. You just do this. They are literally like 10 times harder than the dumbbell side bends that you see soccer moms doing. But harder is better when you're trying to make progress. Most of the time. Don't, don't write that down. And then we have windshield wipers, which I like to do hanging from a bar, but if you're not at that level yet, just lay on the ground or lay on a bench and start rocking your legs back and forth. Again, brace your core just like you would on a squat or deadlift or any other heavy movement. These are awesome for your obliques, but they are tough. Next up, we have barbell landmines and full contact twists, and these are two exercises that I used a ton as a young man when I was getting ready for fighting, but they are awesome for any sport that involves swinging or punching or a golf club or a baseball bat or anything. Just do these, these are important. And if you don't have access to a landmine, just stick the bar in a corner. But for landmines, the bar stays out in front of you and basically you're going from hip to hip. I make special consideration to be twisting my feet the same way I would when I'm punching. Every time that the bar goes to the opposite side, the other foot should be twisting like you're trying to squash a bug, just like you do in punching or if you're swinging a baseball bat or anything, really. Now in full contact twist, the bar is to your side and you're gonna to rotate towards it. But same basic principles apply. You're trying to squash a bug with that opposite foot and you're gonna twist until the barbell is behind your head and then return to the starting position. And if you have access to bands, do these. I don't know what they're called, but I call them the bandy twisty things. Basically, you anchor a band out in front of you, grab a hold of it, touch the floor, twist up and out to your side, come back to the floor, go to the other side. These will not only work your core, they're also gonna make your lungs wanna explode. If you wanna try something hard, set a clock for 30 seconds, go as fast as you possibly can between your sets or at the end of your giant set. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. And finally, we have single arm farmer's walks. Now, I would rather see you do very, very heavy regular farmer's walks, but maybe that's not an option because you don't have the implements or it doesn't fit into your schedule with CNS fatigue or training economy, whatever the case may be. If you only have access to dumbbells or kettlebells or whatever, why you're not doing heavy farmer's walks, I don't know. You you should be doing those. But for core strength, single arm farmer's walks are a great way to build not only your core stability, but also your grip. I like to go up top right at 30 seconds, so at 30 seconds you will take off with the heaviest dumbbell you can carry for 50 feet, and then put it down, rest the remainder of 30 seconds, then pick it up your left side, go back, wait the remainder of 30 seconds, pick it up your right side, go back. You guys can figure that out. All right guys, so there you go. Hopefully this answers some of your questions from the programming video about which ab and oblique variations I personally like to use. If you have something else that works for you, absolutely do it. I'm happy for you, man. Stick with that. Just keep in mind the idea of not collapsing your core down because that is the opposite of what you're trying to teach your body to do if your end goal is moving heavy things. Other exciting things coming up. This Friday night, we are going to be releasing this sweatshirt and the t-shirt that you guys saw me working out in both this video and the last video where I was giving the gym tour. I know a lot of you have been checking my site to see how you can get a hold of some of the shirts, and we have been sold out for months. I apologize about that, but we actually went through a clothing company called The Loyal Brand. You can check out their stuff at theloyalbrand.com. They have amazing things, but they're gonna be making our t-shirts and these sweatshirts for us. We'll be releasing new, more and more things as the time goes on. But for right now, this Friday night, it's gonna be awesome. We're releasing this sweatshirt and that t-shirt. I am so amazed at how awesome that company has been with working with us. 
I'm just super impressed with how these have turned out. I absolutely love them. If you guys wanna grab one, you can pick one up Friday night. Thank you guys so much for the support and to all of you who have been asking about it. And again, I apologize that we've been sold out for so long. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch up with you guys later in the week, but until then, go out, do something amazing with your lives, keep working hard, be nice to each other, people, and I will see you then.